think I'd like to do to start is just to have you each uh, talk about your company, how you you got interested in sustainability, and uh, what were the steps that got you to where you are right now. Why don't we start with you, Emily? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily O'Brien. I'm the founder of Earth Angel, based in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I worked on my first feature film in the summer of 2011 um, as an eco-manager, I think we were calling it at the time. And um, it was a very eye-opening experience. Um, and I have to say, though, I was that was the, the, the sort of light went off where I was like, there's so much more here. There's so much more potential. There's so much more that can be done. And um, uh, from there, you know, I started started getting calls. They're like, hey, can you come green my set? Can you come green my set? And then um, eventually I was like, well, maybe there's a business opportunity here, Um, you know, because it's not enough for me as an individual to just work on one production at a time. We need to figure out scalable solutions here. Um, And so Earth Angel was born um, in the summer of 2013, so we're almost five years old, um, and that was originally my nickname on set. I had a lot of nicknames that were not nice like that, but <laughs> that was one of the nicer ones, and um, to this day, when I walk onto a, a set in New York, people don't know my actual name. They're just like, oh, hi, Earth Angel, okay. Um, so that was, that was a kind of nice, seamless... Um, you, you could do a lot worse. So. I, yeah, definitely. I'll take it. So, um, yeah, so that's how it came to be for us. Thanks. Zena? Um, sure. So my name is Zena Harris, and I own a company called GreenSpark Group, and we're based in Vancouver, B.C. And we do consulting um, on production and with industry organizations and studios. So um, kind of, you know, spread the love a bit between various organizations and there wasn't really a, a formal program. We had a program that um, had resources on, a, on the website, and that was wonderful, but it had stagnated. That was real green, and it was started in, I think, 2006. And, um, and so I knew of that. I met with folks who organized that years ago and just kind of learned a bit about what was going on there and started just reaching out to, to as many folks as I could, and that's where I met Kelsey. Um, and a lot of others, and uh, decided that you know there there was really something here, and there was an opportunity to service an industry that didn 't have a dedicated sustainability consultant or or one at all um, focusing on this particular industry and so um, so there was the business opportunity and um, you know then shortly thereafter got got on my first show and um, and we we rallied as a production and, and did pretty well and um, a lot of hard work to try to prove the concept. Um, and then from there, you know, as relationships developed with other organizations, uh, you know, consulting followed thereafter um, on a more strategic level. Um, and that's what we do, do a lot of now. So that's how I came uh, into the industry and, and now the type of work that we do. I'm Kelsey Evans from Keep It Green Recycling um, in Vancouver. Uh, I started my company in 2010. So I started setting up recycling programs for the offices to start and um, tell them where to get the bins, tell them where to bring the stuff. Um, And then at one point in 2010, someone's like, well, can't you just do this for us? And I was like, I guess so. (laughs) So I started Keep It Green Recycling. Um, So we come like once a week to empty all your bins. Um, We do everything we do. uh, plastics, soft plastics, uh, bottles, styrofoam, uh, paper, electronics, appliances, batteries, CD, DVDs, you name it, we're practically doing it and making a zero waste program. Um, yeah, and over the last like two or ten years, hold on, I've been going for eight years now, so yeah, that's Keep It Green Recycling, <laughs> that's how it started. Thank you. Um, what we've got uh, with the ladies here are three kind of areas of the of the uh, uh, sustainability side. Kelsey is more the practical, uh, showing up and removing waste, liaising with the crew on how better to manage their waste. Zena is a consultant that works with the studios at a little bit of a higher level to hopefully engage services like like Kelsey provides. And Emily works a kind of a, a synthesis of both, uh, consulting and working with providers in in New York City to affect the removal of, of 
uh, the various waste and recycling from sets. But what, what, what were some of the obstacles that you found to, and still find probably, mm-hmm. to getting your services out there more? Um, obstacles for us, I guess. Um, you know what? Everyone's so pretty willing. <laughs> Well, I would say, I mean, just to, to yeah. pick up that, uh, one obstacle that I run into a lot is, um, well, there's, a, there's several, but, um, but the, the top two, it's, it's a mindset thing and, um, and a willingness uh, to, to do something that you weren't directly told to do. Um, and, and so that in, inherent in, in that is behavior change. And we're up against that all the time. And so... One of the one of the ways we're trying to combat that is to have this industry wide dialogue that it is everybody's job to to um, to pre- do, to integrate sustainable production practices. It's not one person's job, like that one PA who does you know works in locations who you can just give the trash to. Um, it is everyone's job to make the entire production sustainable. It's everyone's job in the industry to. Um, to shift the culture of the industry, to do something to shift a culture. So that's, um, that's kind of the, the language we're, we're using right now and how we're talking about sustainable production um, because of that, um, the barrier, the sort of mindset barrier um, that, that I find yeah. um, sometimes to, to be, you know, a bit of an issue. So I guess our hardest part of, like, being environmentally friendly would be set for sure just changing the old ways of like having garbages at all at the end of each truck um so like what we do together is like create recycling stations and like trying to train the crew is like i go constantly to different uh, productions on set and train them on set on how to use stations and like limit your waste so i think if anything that would be the hardest part yeah, I definitely want to echo Zena's sentiments about the behavioral change element. Um, I think from like a larger kind of industry scope, though, I mean, the fact that we have no regulatory compliance is a huge barrier for us. You know, a lot of other industries have it's it's mandatory. They have to report their carbon emissions and certain environmental impact um, assessment reporting. None of that is mandatory for us. Um, and we're this very unique circus like industry that's kind of hard to, to pinpoint. Um, and so we just kind of fall under the radar um, in a lot of aspects. Um, and we're very unique in that we're an intersection of a lot of different types of industries, right? So we're not um, just dealing with construction demolition waste. We're, we're dealing with organics. We're dealing with electronics. Um, and so we, as sustainability consultants, have to be knowledgeable in each of these different areas um, and then translate that and make it you know, actually... Uh, applicable and um, and something that is uh, easily integrated in into the production um, you know chaos if if you will um, so I think that that's a, that's a huge one and also I think unlike other sectors where there's this real consumer demand for sustainable products. Um, we don't have that luxury either that's motivating people. So um, most people, you know, who are environmentally conscious are going to purchase organic, are going to purchase for fair trade, or, you know, the, you can see those trends in the marketplace and in um, other sectors, but no one's going to watch a film or television show because it was produced sustainably. Like, ultimately, it comes down to content. Um, so we have to figure out other motivating factors. Um, And that's where I think if we can't rely on external consumer demand, we have to drive it internally, Um, which is why like conversations like this are so important. Um, And the dialogue and and getting all the stakeholders involved is so crucial. Um, I think you guys mentioned a a word that I think is increasingly relevant, and that's compliance. And I think that um, we're seeing certainly in this province, uh, in this city, uh, in Vancouver, in New York City, that increasingly there is a requirement on industry to to record, to benchmark their their emissions and, and data. Um, but that that compliance is not only from a legislated point of view with governments, but from a production point of view. Who is who is the driver on a set for uh, for that set to be a, a sustainable set or one that is really focusing on uh, reducing? So. I, I'd just like to hear a little bit about um, grassroots versus top-down. 
Oh boy. Yeah, this is, this is a big topic. Um, so first of all, there's no one size fits all to, to our industry. And so I think that inspiring the, the crew to, um, to be actively engaged and involved, that that is the key to success. Um, and so I would say don't underestimate how much the grassroots can um, impact the success of a sustainability program on, on a shoot. I mean, I am an example of someone who worked in the industry, had nothing to do with sustainability, and now I've made this my career. We have some of the most incredible craftspeople and, and tradespeople in, in, in the world. Like, what we create is magnificent. Imagine what we did, with, what we could do if we harnessed that towards more sustainable, um, you know, solutions as well. So I would say the short answer is it's both. <laughs> Sorry for the very long answer. But, um, yeah. I, I absolutely agree that it, it, it's both. Um, I, we too have gotten hired by um, producers and also directly from studios saying, you know, they want it is important to them that they have a sustainable production consultant on the show and to reflect, you know, their values and wants and and you know try and integrate as much uh, sustainable pr- production as possible. You know, that is how we started. We started from the studio asking for that. Um, and we've since been hired directly by uh, producers who say that they want that as well. So um, so it definitely comes from that level. Uh, and then absolutely motivating the crew, engaging the crew. A lot of great ideas come from crew. So it's absolutely a grassroots, um, you know, endeavor and in, in, in that way as well. Um, from an organizational perspective, um, when we're talking about, or from a program perspective with Real Green, um, Real Green is an organization now, uh, it's transformed, uh, it, uh, it's now uh, funded by 13 different uh, industry organizations who, at the very top of their organization, say that, they, that sustainable production is important, so they put money into this program uh, so that we can deliver tools, resources, engage uh, with the community uh, and and filmmakers um, for free. Basically, they're paying for this this to happen. Uh, so we bring people together regularly. Uh, we listen to what they say. We address you know issues that they have and. People have gotten really fired up, and this is kind of this also is an example of top down and bottom up um, approach as well. Real Green is that platform in the middle for people to express themselves, um, but uh, you know, folks have gotten fired up. They've started initiatives on their own and filtered it through Real Green so that we as an industry can make some some progress in in these certain pain point uh, areas. And it's pretty exciting to see. So without the support of those organizations, we wouldn't be able to do as much as quick as we've been, we've been doing it. And we're capturing the carbon from all the firing up that's going on as well. So. <laughs> that's right. Kelsey, um, a little, I, slightly <laughs> different on your end. Yes, it um, is. But, um, but I do agree with them. Uh, it's both. Um, we get hired, though, within the first week of production starting up. So we set up the offices right away. Um, but in the last, like, three to four years, I've noticed all the departments are starting to ask for recycling. So, like, uh, we'll set up set deck, props, costumes, construction, um, even all the stages. So right away, like, before, there was none of that. And now it's huge. So each production could have, like, over, like, 100 bins, depending on what they want. So that. It is, it's pretty awesome to see Vancouver's just like doing such a great job. Um, and then with the studio, that does help though, because they um, come in and they're like, this is what we want. And so, like, uh, well, usually a lot of the productions will have green leads. So the green lead will contact me and be like, can we do something new? Can we do this? And then if Zena's hired on, then we can work together even to make a program even better. So, yeah, both. Yeah. Um, we've talked a lot about. Uh, Waste recycling, composting, food um, uh, sharing, um, and and from my perspective, the big you know the elephant in the room is what about the carbon emitting things that we rent? What proportion of of waste from a set comes from um, stuff that goes to landfill, stuff stuff that has to be processed, versus idling vehicles, trucks, generators? 
do you do you have that notion in mind? And I can like, see everybody nodding, so it's like, hit me. Yeah, so we, we do track all of this, right? Uh, and we do a carbon footprint at the end. We do va- waste diversion report and, and all. Uh, we know that in terms of carbon emissions, uh, and this is different for every you know, jurisdiction depending on your energy portfolio, but um, we know that about 80%, 80 to 90% of a production's carbon footprint is fuel, straight up fuel from, from generators, from transportation, um, any vehicles, anything that uses fuel. Um, and uh, I, I usually show, uh, in our carbon literacy course, I show an image, um, a graph of, of this um, you know, carbon emissions uh, footprint, and you can, you can clearly see, and it, it, the trend is there, um, you know, whether you're filming, no matter where you're filming, I would say, I would venture to say also New York fuel is kind of, is a major contributor uh, to the, the um, carbon footprint. And I'm talking like hundreds of metric tons of carbon just for fuel. Um, so if we, whatever we can do to reduce that, any technology that we can use, electric vehicles, uh, battery power stations, um, whatever we can do to reduce the use of fuel, I think is, is really key, and we need to be going after that right now. And one teeny pitch, uh, the industry, as many of you will know, is, is slowly but surely kind of migrating to LED technology on set in terms of lighting. And one of the major uh, components of that is that it takes far less power to run the, the lights. So in theory, in theory, um, generators don't need to be run at quite the capacity. And, and maybe there are alternate sources, as we will hopefully see a little bit later in the product demo. We've got uh, um, our guru, Mike Harwood, who will be demonstrating and, and, and showing some LED lighting and some new technology that is... Uh, uh, hopefully, we'll start replacing battery or gas-powered uh, generators on set, whether it be gas or, or diesel fuel. So um, we are, I think, getting towards the end. But uh, just to kind of as a wrap-up, I, I guess what I want to know is what's next? What's the next big step? How do we move this? How do we move this? 11 steps. How do we move this forward? No, but, but obviously, we've got to take one at a time. Sure. What would be a, a next step for Earth Angel? Um, a next step for Earth Angel is that we are sort of laser focused on data right now, um, improving data collection methodologies, reporting analysis, um, and then sharing that as far and wide as we can to further the discussion and, and the level of engagement. Um, so that's that's definitely at the forefront of, of what we have happening. Um, but I think another similarly important thing that we have going on right now is we just launched our Earth Angel Ambassador program um, in the fall. And because what we found is by working on set, um, the actors are actually very engaged and inspired by what we're doing. And of course, when we talk about stakeholders, they're, they're certainly a very powerful one. So we decided, we got together and we were like, we want to figure out a way to harness this um, to you know, create like, some kind of an official endorsement um, uh, initiative, and so we're we're very blessed right now. We have four ambassadors. We have Megan Boone, who's the lead actress of The Blacklist. Bobby Cannavale, um, Griffin Newman, who's the co-star of the new Amazon series The Tick, and um, Lauren McCrosty, who's a, a UK-based um, actress. And um, and already we are having meetings with producers because of this ambassador program. Um, and so uh, going back to that. You know, how can we leverage internal demand, right? So, like, how can we, um, you know, tap into these different forces, if you will, um, to, to try to get the conversation started in that way? So, so that's really, I, I think, what our, um, our main areas of focus are right now. What would be a great place to get to, I think, would be an industry in which the keys that are hired for shows say, it may not be a rider, but it may be. I want to know that this production will be a production that is focusing or is that it has got an interest in sustainability so that my department can do its part to help out. Um, I'd like to thank the Academy again for allowing us this forum, and I'd like to thank very much Emily, Zena, and Kelsey for participating. And again, thanks very much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.